Today, when I was grabbing my 5.56 competition rifle out of the safe for some dry fire practice, I noticed my 22 lr CZ457 next to it, and it reminded me. These rifles have both shot roughly over 3,000 rounds through their barrels, and it got me thinking, what would 3,000 rounds through a barrel look like after shooting 22 lr compared to 3,000 rounds of the higher pressure 223 cartridge? The two rounds have similar sized projectiles, even being able to be shot out of the same barrel with something like a CMMG 22 lr conversion kit and an AR-15, but that's where their similarities kind of end. As you may know, 5.56 is a higher pressure centerfire cartridge, typically with a copper jacketed projectile pushing at over 50,000 psi, while the 22 lr is a waxy rim fire round usually with soft exposed lead tips pushing just over 20,000 psi. And it's these differences, along with a few others, such as the difference in propellants and materials used in these two rounds, that made me wonder, how much different will the barrels look after similar round counts? So I brought out my test long bore scope camera to see what's inside. First, we'll start with the competition rifle. This rifle here is a PSA 16 inch chambered in 5.56, which can shoot either 5.56 NATO or 223. This rifle has been shooting almost entirely Fiochi 223 and 5.56 FMJ for its entire lifespan. It's not the cheapest, but it's what I use for competitions and for shooting paper at the range. As we try to put the camera down the barrel, almost immediately you'll notice a slightly blue hue white buildup around the muzzle device and some streaking throughout the barrel. That would be copper fouling that is reacted with the cleaning solvents used, similar to the oxidation on the Statue of Liberty. If you compare it to this footage that was taken before cleaning, you'll notice the concentrations of copper are still, well, copper colored, as they haven't reacted with any of the chemicals yet and haven't sat long enough for oxidization to take effect. The fouling comes from the copper jacket around the projectile coming off of it as it spins fast down through the barrel at high speeds. This fouling isn't much of an issue and can be resolved by running a few patches through the barrel using some copper solvents to take off the residue. If you were curious about this specific barrel here, this is a Palmetto State Armory Freedom 16 inch chrome molly vandium steel barrel with a 1 in 7 twist rate. It comes stock with a lot of PSA completed uppers, but you can also buy this barrel standalone for $119 from their website. I got my completed upper on sale for $279, including the charging handle and bolt carrier group for this price, and this barrel has held up beautifully for how little cleaning it has gotten. In the last 3,000 rounds this barrel has shot, it has only been cleaned twice, once at the 2,000 round limit, which you can see in another video, and another just a few hundred rounds ago. Now I'm not saying that this is the cleaning pattern that you should follow, I'm doing this purely for the entertainment value of trying to see what happens and so I can report any failures back to you guys. The A2 muzzle device offers the most interesting close-up as we pull the bore scope out of the barrel. You can see the higher concentrations of fouling that is built up at the very end where the muzzle device and the barrel meet. In the previous video, it was mostly blackened carbon, but as that has been cleaned away and the reacted copper has shined through, the muzzle device is almost luminescent under the bore scope. Moving on to the 22 lr I have my CZ457 Varmint. This is my benchrest precision rifle that has gone through about three cases of these lead-tipped CCI standard velocity rounds. Just about every round through this barrel has been a soft lead tip projectile, as opposed to the copper jacketed 223s that we observed previously. Unlike the 5.56 comp rifle, this 22 lr bolt action doesn't send as many rounds downrange with as rapid of a procession. And also unlike the 5.56, the rounds it does send downrange behave a little differently as they come out of this heavy, cold hammer forged 20.5 inch barrel with a 1 in 16th twist rate. As we enter the barrel, you'll notice there's a difference in the fouling that we start to see. In the 223, we quickly observed oxidized copper fouling almost immediately all the way through the streaking of the beginning of the barrel. Here, however, it almost looks like there's a waxy residue coating the barrel. Additionally, you'll notice these small silver specks inside the barrel. These small specks are lead fouling. Much like the copper fouling from before, the small silver specks are leftover pieces of the soft lead tip that shed while spinning down the rifling. One thing that stands out to me in the 22 lr barrel is the larger presence of the small chunks of fouling as opposed to the streaking we saw with the 223. I assume that has to do with the choice of exposed lead tips being more susceptible to the physical contact it makes with the barrel as opposed to a jacketed cartridge. Although lead buildup is noticeable, its relatively slow accumulation rarely has an impact on accuracy unless the barrel is neglected for thousands of rounds. A small buildup of lead and waxy bullet lubricant is even considered beneficial by some competition shooters who wouldn't dare clean their barrel unless there's a noticeable shift in POI. This rifle is being treated similarly and I won't be cleaning it until I do notice a shift in POI. As we make our way up towards the chamber, we can start to see more carbon buildup, which we typically associate with a dirtier 22 lr round which I expected to see more of down the entire length of the barrel. 
And as we make our way back out of the barrel, I want to talk about the two types of barrels that we have here. The two barrels we're observing today are quite different, one being a budget semi-auto chrome molly line barrel, and the other a bolt action heavy cold hammer forged precision barrel. Cold hammer forged barrels like the CZ457 varmints are made by shaping steel around a mandrel with a series of hammers, which creates a denser and more durable heat resistant barrel while a chrome line barrel that we saw on the AR-15 are made out of a thin layer of chrome electroplated to the inside of the bore to increase the hardness and extend the lifespan of the barrel. The two barrels we saw today use both techniques for two similar outcomes, so I thought it'd be interesting to visually see the difference. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This one was more for fun than anything instructional, but if you would like to see a similar comparison all done on the AR-15 platform, let me know and I can either get a CMMG kit for testing or a dedicated rifle such as the M&P 1522. Leave your comments down below, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.